the E89 BMW Z4 has always had a special place in my heart. My first Roadster experience was 7 years ago and that was the first time I stepped into the Z4. Imagine a kid standing on the side of the street, made speechless by the look of this car and amazed by the thrill from the passenger seat with his eyes wide open. That kid was me. And this special feeling has since been tingling at the tip of my mind. Today we have here a 2012 BMW Z4 S Drive 35 IS, the top of the trims at the time. Now, if you're wondering why I'm doing voiceover for this video, it is because the weather condition in Los Angeles on the day of filming this video was, well, take a look. Without a doubt, the snow, rain, and wind made this city of angels a bit miserable, but looking at this beauty certainly brightened my heart. Debuted over 10 years ago, it is still, in my opinion, one of the best looking BMWs ever made. The design of the Z4, I think, is very sculpted. And it is a prime example of maximizing beauty with simplistic lines. A long nose with a short rear overhang brings out that classic roadster look. One long and striking line starts from the very front of the car, runs over the bonnet, and ends at the last quarter of the body as the second line extends over it from the taillight. This M Sport Trim Z4 came with 18-inch alloy wheels with a little M badge, and a 5-spoke rim granted an athletic stance. A low-positioned rear end beautifully finishes that sleek and flat look of the car with LED taillights well integrated into the body language of the design. The rear trunk can be opened by pressing into the BMW badge and with the roof up, you have nearly 11 cubic feet of trunk space, which should be sufficient for a small luggage and two backpacks. If you wanted to put the roof down, you would have to close the cover which is used for the metal roof to sit on once folded. Although Z4 buyers are less likely to consider practicality in the first place, it is worth mentioning that the cover cuts the overall trunk space to less than 5 cubic feet. And the narrow opening makes loading and unloading anything thicker than a backpack a difficult task. The trunk lid, however, can soft close, which is a plus. The convertible roof can be remotely opened by holding down the unlock button on the key fob. During this 21 second process, you can sit back, relax, and watch the magic happen. Trust me, on a sunny day, those will be the 21 seconds that never get out of the style. The roof can also be remotely closed by holding down the lock button on the key fob. Most importantly, the E89 Z4 is the only hard top convertible Z4 to date, and that said, it is beautiful with the roof up and down. With the roof down, the Z4's charm continues to ooze out, resembles that of a shark appearance. Many would say that the previous E85 Z4 designed by Anders Warming was a classic and timeless icon. And I would say that this E89 Z4 designed by Miss Julianne Blassie took on a more modern look of an icon, with an extra layer of emotions and characters. Moving on to the interior. Frameless windows are expected, and the door is finished with leather and lines of stitching, which are standard on a top trim. An embedded aluminum trim greets you as you enter the cabin, and the S-Drive 35 IS stitching on the carpet reminds you of its specialty. Use of soft material is visible on places such as the center console and top of the dashboard. The M-styled multi-function steering wheel is thickly wrapped in leather, with aluminum paddle shifters mounted behind it. One characteristic of this interior is the unsymmetrical design, which can be controversial to some eyes because parts of this interior don't look very BMW. For example, the air conditioning control units are separated into four dials. You don't see this often in BMWs, but thankfully it is logically designed and thus easy to use. Still, some typical BMW designs remain. For example, this shift lever that continues to appear in pretty much all BMWs in the following 6 years. And of course, it does this ghostly pop when you press the P button. The center screen folds into the dash when the car is off, and it is controlled by our familiar BMW iDrive wheel. Just don't expect the infotainment system to be as smooth as the current ones, and it is not a touchscreen, not a surprise here. The gauge cluster is presented in your typical BMW fashion, with tachometer and speedometer clearly displayed with orange backlit. 
And similar to the newer BMWs, you can switch drive modes by pressing the buttons near the shift lever. And there is Comfort, Sport, and Sport Plus with traction control turned off. Open the center storage lid, you'll find a little leather pouch on the back of the lid. And pressing the release here pops up a cover, which hides a rather interesting dock that does not fit any of my devices. The cup holder on the passenger side is enough to contain a variety of bottles, but the other two in the center storage are quite tiny, not to mention that they also kill the center armrest. Lastly, there is this storage behind the seats and I wouldn't recommend sticking your skis through it. Although this interior looks a bit outdated by today's standard, there is no doubt that many thoughts went into making it a special place to spend some time in. In terms of performance, under the hood sits a 3.0-liter turbocharged inline 6 engine, an upgraded version from the one that was used in the legendary 1 Series AM Coupe. 335 horsepower are available to your disposal, and a peak torque of 369 pound-feet with overboost or 332 pound-feet without overboost are right at the tip of your toes. In this M Sport trim, this engine is paired with a 7-speed dual-clutch transmission and can do 0 to 60 in 4.7 seconds with a stock top speed of 155 miles per hour. Dual exhaust is standard and it sounds like this. Now it's time to get it rolling. Now we're in comfort mode, as you can hear, in the cabin when the top is on. And it's a little noisy, uh, mostly from the road. And you can tell that the insulation isn't the best as you can expect from a convertible, even though this is a hard top. One thing about this car is I was driving in comfort mode and it doesn't really feel comfortable. This car it was already sporty in comfort mode. The steering, the response, and the throttle, and the suspension, it's really harsh. And I can imagine if it going to sport, it wouldn't be any, you know, more comfortable, of course. But in modern day standard, that comfort mode would be some of the cars sport mode nowadays. And the sport mode in this car would be the sport plus mode on some of the cars. And the sport plus with traction control off would be the race mode on some other modern cars. Another thing with this car is the sitting position it's extremely low i know it's not surprising because this car it is a low car to begin with but the way the seat's been designed and the hood sort of curve up a little makes you feel like you're at a very low sitting position and that makes you feel really really sporty and adding on to this is a steering wheel it is actually on a smaller side and as you know smaller steering wheels can make you feel sporty uh, that's a myth but it's actually true uh, for example in the newer Porsche Macan that car has an option of, of a, a sporty steering wheel that is actually smaller than the regular original wheel and that according to Porsche is supposed to make you feel more sporty when you drive and in this case the car it is absolutely true okay let's uh, click the button and switch into sport mode uh, instantly you can feel that suspension is not much different but oh, the steering wheel is heavier and tighter I think that's what makes it feel sporty throttle response Oh, oh yes, yes, it is. <laughs> it goes. It just goes. And the thing about this car is, when you drive it, taking tight corners like this, like this, and you push the gas at the same time. Oh, that was such a g-force being applied to you. You can feel that it's the front and it's pulling you uh, as if you are the center of a circle, and it pulls you around the center of a circle when you're taking any corners see this is different from its rivals such as the Porsche Boxster and so on okay we're now on a pretty stretchy road there's no car behind us or in front of us it's going to a sport and give this car a push first gear oh wheel spin wheel spin you see the wheel spin right there Woo! Oh, 
Wow. Okay. Okay, 3 liter. 3 liter inline 6 engine. I got you. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> Back to normal. You can see that this car has got quite a bit of wheel spin. The, uh, there's quite a lot of power on the uh, wheels in the back. And uh, I have to tell you that it's quite interesting because usually this car can do 0 to 60 in 4.7 seconds. And usually in a car with that speed, there's a lot of torque again, a lot of pushback into your seat action. On this car, it's quite different. As you can see, it goes fast, but I've, I'm not pushed into my seat. It's not a violent uh, you know, acceleration. Okay, so now I've made a stop because I want to show you guys how the retractable roof works and how it is when you are inside of this car. See, the thing is you have to hold the button down uh, with your right hand and that just kind of blocks the way. And I know it's not a perfect weather to open the uh, convertible top, but I'm still going to do it anyways. This is what it feels like when the top is off. You got much, oh, much, much better visibility. Oh, you can hear the engine even better. <laughs> See, that's the way it's supposed to be driven. Oh man, this is an aggressive car. That was what? I don't That was like 70 miles per hour. <laughs> it's oversteering. It's oversteering. But it's so easy to correct. Oh, this is such a sports car. <laughs> oh, man. You're, you have to be really engaged and enjoy this car when you can. Downshift. Oh man, and the popping, perfect complement with this car. Oh man, the DCT transmission, once it's warmed up, it's much faster. I, I said at lower speed, it's a little kind of, you know, sluggy and not really responsive. But right now, this is full on, this is in the flow, it's full on driving. Okay, I think we have a lot of that fun of having a convertible. Oh, <laughs> the popping comes again. See, this car is the kind of car you take out on a Sunday afternoon when it's all sunny and all that. Not really perfect with the rain, but you guys see it. Even that's the case, I still had ton, tons of fun with this car. It isn't quite the kind of car that you expect, such as the uh, Porsche Boxster or whatever, because those cars you have much more accurate steering and it's like it's like a German Shepherd I said in one of my previous videos you go whatever you go it does whatever you ask it for this car is different it's this car is a lifestyle car you take it out you get the attention you enjoy the sunshine on your face you give that gas take the corners it doesn't have to be all that perfectly sporty and balanced that's the beauty about this car if you want a car like perfectly balanced and, and you know accurate maybe you should go with the Boxster if you're looking for a car like that then the Z4 it's not really that kind of car for you in conclusion the E89 BMW Z4 is a fun convertible to experience on the road with a strikingly beautiful appearance that leaves little to none to be desired Sure, there are imperfections in this driving experience, but at the end of the day, it is the imperfection and a sunny afternoon that makes a roaster roaster. This is what we drive, and I will see you in the next video.